When comedians sit around and discuss comedy, the name Groucho is mentioned with awe, respect, and great admiration. This means it's... I'm going to die up there. <laughs> I'll never have a nicer introduction to a funeral. I want to hear what you say at the finish. <laughs> his legendary Lear is caustic wit. I'm sick of that voice legend. <laughs> I've established him as one of our most outrageous humorists. He makes Don Rickles look like the flying nun. <laughs> I don't think that wouldn't be an improvement. <laughs> Mark's bear witness to two of the funniest words in the English language. Ladies and gentlemen, Groucho Marx. You're looking fine tonight. You're much taller than I thought you were. <laughs> Uh, Friars and, and Guest of Honor, when I was asked to appear here tonight on the Kraft Music Hall to honor Johnny Carson, my immediate reaction was to give up my citizenship and move to Czechoslovakia. <laughs> Gee, I thought they'd yell at that. <laughs> Deadly silence came over Appomattox. <laughs> Frankly, I cannot live in a country that will honor a man whose only claim to fame is that from the side he looks like Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> I thought that it would be deathly silent. <laughs> you get fooled by a lousy speech. Don't worry, your time is coming. Actually, when you're commanded to appear at this kind of a turkey, you will. <laughs> You naturally feel privileged and honored, but in my case, it's ridiculous. I hardly know the man. He's a complete strangler, no stranger. I'd have bet on that. You know? He's a complete stranger, and not even a close one at that. Sure, I've heard a few stories about Johnny Carson, but a man's private, sordid life is his own. Nevertheless, I have done some research on little Johnny. I went back to the scene of his childhood, Nebraska. Isn't that true? It's Nebraska? You keep shifting around the Middle West. I don't know where you're from. <laughs> I went to Nebraska to talk to Johnny's mother. I'm happy to report she remembers Johnny. <laughs> she doesn't remember his father. <laughs> But she remembers Johnny. <laughs> then I called on his old high school teacher, and I asked her, what kind of a student was Johnny Carson? But she didn't remember Johnny. However, she did remember Johnny's father. <laughs> You know, I try to watch Johnny. I've, I've tuned in three times. One time, Jerry Lewis was the host of The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. <laughs> the second time, Harry Belafonte was the host of The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. <laughs> third time, I was the host of The Tonight Show <laughs> starring Johnny Carson. I've never known Johnny Carson to host The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. <laughs> We're honoring a man who doesn't show up for work. <laughs> he could be the mayor. <laughs> Let me give you an idea of the friendship Johnny Carson and I have for each other. I was on Johnny Carson's very first Tonight Show six years ago. I'll never forget the first night I met him. And heaven knows I've tried. <laughs> I was in my dressing room. At least that's what they said it was. It was the only dressing room I ever saw with 12 sinks. <laughs> I 
He rushed in, dropped some change in the machine, <laughs> bought a comb, a nail clipper, <laughs> got a squirt of perfume and left. <laughs> the last time I saw him was about 40 minutes ago. I had the same dressing room. <laughs> Two sinks had been removed. <laughs> He came in and said, boy, am I glad you're here. The nail clipper doesn't work. <laughs> well, for, for your information, Mr. Carson, the perfume's worn off, too. <laughs> Johnny, I've never asked a favor of you because, frankly, you're not the warmest person in the world. <laughs> even in your underwear. <laughs> but I'd like to ask you a favor anyway. Can you get me Hermione Gingold's phone number? <laughs>